name is Greg Simon. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Loyal. Uh, we are the internet of loyalty. Although we use blockchain for our company, we consider ourselves to be a loyalty solution provider first and a blockchain company second. We are a Delaware C corporation. We incorporated three years ago, so we've been around for a while. The initial market opportunity that we're solving or the market we're entering is uh, the uh, loyalty industry is $117 billion per year in 2014. Uh, it's grown a bit since then, and we plan to expand that tremendously uh, with our offering. So we're solving initially four problems in this industry, as consumers are probably familiar with most of them. Uh, the fragmentation, it's difficult to take a mile and spend it as cash somewhere else. Uh, the lack of scalability in programs, it's confusing for us, and most importantly for the large programs, uh, breakage, which is the uh, points that have been issued that aren't recorded on the balance sheet as a liability. I'm a CPA, so I kind of get this, but it sounds like jargon. Basically, when you earn a point, it's supposed to be recorded as a future performance obligation on the issuer's balance sheet. The accounting rules here are very lax, so they generally don't report about 20, 30% of that. So when you're getting to four or five or six billion dollars of liability, you're potentially looking at two or three billion dollars that isn't carrying on that balance sheet. Um, so the solution that we're providing for that, let's just focus on the middle part here, our capabilities. Um, we have a uh, private permission blockchain built on IBM Fabric that is live, and uh, we're basically offering five things initially to this market. Scalability. There's a certain amount of cost involved in trusting your network um, participant who's issuing or redeeming your points on your behalf. We reduce that cost significantly. Uh, dynamic and personalized. By utilizing smart contracts, we can turn the reward into something like a personalized concierge, where the definition of the value can be dynamic according to who you are and your lifestyle. Multi-branded programs, I like to pick on the American Express Plenty program, uh, for example here. If I go into a Macy's store in the Plenty program, currently all I earn is a Plenty point. If we migrate this to blockchain, because the reward becomes an identifiable object, as opposed to now it's not, we can put unique characteristics just on those tokens, and now I'm earning uh, Macy's power by plenty of points. Real-time interoperability, and the liability management part is the critical part. These programs want to reduce that liability in a way that will um, encourage customer engagement and also So our pipeline, we launched last May in uh, with a rewards program that Deloitte is operating called Decoin. That's gone to live production. They have 2,000 employees actively using that today. Plans are to expand that to 60,000 employees next year, and they're reselling that to their clients, which is a key point there. We've been working with Emirates Airlines on Skyward Miles proof of concept since last June. Uh, we launched the Dubai Points program in December and have licensed it out to a third party. Uh, we will sign up our first reseller in the first quarter, and we're going to resell our migration um, full this year. I'm going to go quickly because I'm running out of time. So we operate on a bar model, and that means that we don't sell directly to the client. We use resellers to leverage their existing relationships, and we charge them a licensing fee. The resellers that we currently have signed up that are selling for us, IBM, Capgemini, Deloitte, Accenture, PMC, Oregon Data, which is in uh, Brazil, Quidem, and our lead investor, Pinet. We're targeting 10 bars by 2018. Uh, our roadmap, you can see we launched with our first protocol last year. Uh, we've recently upgraded that to IBM Fabric. Our current run rate is $720,000 on a monthly licensing fee. That will go up to 1.2 million in a few months. Our team is our magic. A few of them are here. And we are doing Series A raise. It's led by a company called INET, which is a major system integrator in Saudi Arabia. We have a strong presence in Dubai. Thank um, you, Greg. Okay. They said you're ready now. <laughs> so you said your run rate is 170,000 a month? Our run rate now is 60,000 per month, so 70, 720 annually. 720. And, um, and when, when you say that, is that money into you, or is that? Like, how does, how does the, the business work? The retailer has, or whoever your bar is, has some sort of special points. You we don't do that with a flat monthly rate because our expenses aren't variable based on transaction volume because the users are securing on us. 
So we charge a flat monthly rate. Uh, we're doing the migration to the VAR model now. Previously, we did do the direct client engagement. So Deloitte and Emirates are paying us a monthly licensing fee, regardless of transaction volume. But Quidem, our third client, is a reseller. Um, and we're charging them a slightly higher licensing fee, but now they use that license to bring on a client that we've authorized them to use our platform. Are you going to cre create some sort of a marketplace between all of these so that your so that the points from one place, points from IBM, go to the points from Starbucks or whatever else? We facilitate that. That's right. So think of us as an internet. Their existing networks are intranets. It was very important for all of them to retain 100% control of their programs. So the issuance and the rules and all of that, nothing like that changes. But because they have this internet now connecting all the different islands, they can permission someone else to come in and work with them. And that's one of the things that we facilitate. So I've seen a lot of loyalty programs. It's a big business. What pain are you solving? If I walked in and said, hey, what's driving you crazy? And then this solves it. Um, unfortunately, it's not the consumer's pain that we solve because... I'm talking about the person that runs it because that's your customer. Right, so it depends on who it is. Our, our initial market approach is the large programs with a large liability and a lot of breakage. For them, what we're offering is the ability to accelerate redemption velocity, to allow for liquidity of trading amongst consumers, and that velocity, that redemption then comes back at low full value, less breakage. Because that's all they really care about right now. So imagine if you have $5 billion of liabilities, suddenly everybody's redeeming more points, and you have to rise up your estimate to five and a half billion, now the CFO is out of work. So what they want to do is bring that liability down to something smaller in a way that doesn't necessarily damage the consumers. Like not, not a full devaluation. And we can offer that in a number of ways. Uh, walk me through the logic of moving over to the value added reseller model, and how are you incentivizing uh, value added resellers to go out and push your product and aligning them with you know, the message you want them to be delivering to end customers? Sure. So we started out with the direct engagement model. Uh, with our CRM, we hired two loyalty industry experts last June who had the relationships, and we started all the communication and dialogue that helped us with Deloitte, helped us with Emirates, but it's certainly not scalable. Right? So I can't hire 20 salespeople and have them go out with a one-year lead time talking to all these different program operators. Our plan was always to do the reselling model. We pulled it forward because the lead time is very long. Um, so we initially approached uh, Deloitte, who, as everybody here probably knows, is quite active in blockchain. Um, IBM, as we migrated to Fabric, uh, has a very strong interest in promoting us. The, the, there, it depends on who the reseller is. For the consultants, it's the consulting fee. So they implement the program, and then yeah, they've got all these other things that they can do with that client. IBM, promotion of Fabric. Uh, and the others each have their own, I guess, reason why they want to be the reseller. Um, the way the economics work is the reseller, who's usually the system integrator, they're the primary engagement partner with the client. Um, so we're secondary behind that. So the client doesn't actually contract directly with us. We charge the flat the licensing fee to the reseller, and then they can charge whatever they want beyond that. The resellers wanted to be in control. We only wanted the monthly fee. So that's how we structure it. Any other qu quick questions? Yeah, so, so multi point breakage and gift card breakage are very similar to what it's handled. Um, most companies want the breakage. You know, why would they? I mean, it, it's, it's better to have a, a big balance sheet with you know, a high breakage amount than to have a smaller one with uh, low breakage, mm -hmm. ultimately. Uh, that's the way that you know, that's what we just think about. It. What were your thinking as to why they want to switch to that one, to the latter model? Sure. Well, we don't really know gift cards. We don't do that primarily because they want to compete against you when you're doing gift. But <laughs> yeah, we focus on just traditional loyalty programs. And you're right. If it's a small program, it doesn't really matter. If you've got 500 million dollars of a liability, 30 percent breakage, it's not a big deal. But when you're at the airlines or like the major hotels and you're looking at five, six billion dollars that you show, or maybe that's just American Express. American Express membership rewards liability is about $6 billion. So the, the real value is probably eight or nine, right? It's that part they don't see. It's okay as long as there's an unexpected change of behavior. So that unexpected change of behavior happens in the wrong direction, then they have to revise that estimate. And when you get to these very large numbers, the same percentage change is a greater absolute amount of dollar. So they want to bring it down to a smaller amount so that risk of a 0.1% change of behavior Instead of being $100 million, it's like 10. Thank you. So our next presenting company will be.